Hi, I'm Nathan from Nedley Health. We're in the middle of a residential depression and anxiety recovery program, and we've been getting a lot of questions about the differences between nutrition for the body and nutrition for the mind. So I've got Dr. Neil Nedley with me. Would you go ahead and explain what those differences are? Well, that's a very good question, and there are differences, and those differences have to do with what we call the blood-brain barrier. Uh, when the circulation goes up into the brain, it changes into steel pipes. The arteries are not at all like the arteries in the rest of the body. These arteries don't want to get any or let any large molecules get through to the brain because large molecules tend to be very toxic to the brain. And the brain is the most protected organ that we have. Uh, in part due to the fact that we can't regenerate or make new neurons as adults. And also, these are the oldest living cells in our body. Our neurons, uh, actually most of them, were formed at the very beginning of our bodies being formed in embryology. All this migration was going to the nervous system. And those cells are still alive, but they're vulnerable and they're vulnerable to toxins. There are some toxins that cross the blood-brain barrier like alcohol that actually destroy um, these neurons and that's why we want people to quit drinking. Uh, but uh, things like serotonin that is used in both the gut and it's used in other organs, um, serotonin levels in the bloodstream have nothing to do with serotonin levels in the brain because serotonin can't cross the blood-brain barrier. It's too large. Uh, dopamine can't cross the blood-brain barrier. We can give dopamine, you know, IV, and it's not going to have an effect on the brain. Uh, norepinephrine, a very important neurotransmitter for focus and memory, uh, it can't cross the blood-brain barrier. We can give it uh, IV, uh, we can give it orally, but it's not going to get into the brain. We have to manufacture these things ourselves. Uh, and the brain is able to do this if we have the right substrates. Now, even those substrates can't cross the blood-brain barrier on their own. Uh, there's an, an amino acid called tryptophan. We need that. It's essential to be able to make serotonin. But tryptophan is a large neutral amino acid that won't cross the blood-brain barrier in, unless it has a carrier. And there are specific carriers that carry those type of, of large neutral amino acids across. And if there's too much competition, in other words, if we're on too high a protein diet, we'll actually get less tryptophan into the brain. And, but we want to also be able to have an insulin response because that carrier works better on an insulin-mediated mechanism. So if we're eating carbs, we get more tryptophan into the brain if the tryptophan is there with the carbs, and we can make more serotonin. And so this is the, the crucial part of understanding the role of nutrition in the brain because if we're not making enough serotonin, if we're not getting enough tryptophan across, we're going to have a serotonin deficit and the solution that the pharmaceutical industry has come up with is not anything to help us make more serotonin or develop more receptors. They have nothing for that. Uh, but what they do is to actually have a molecule that comes in and blocks the vacuum cleaners for serotonin of going back up into the neuron that released it. Well, that can help us short term, but it can actually cause even more of a deficit in the very neuron that, that is short in serotonin because we've just blocked the vacuum of serotonin back up into that neuron, so it's going to even have more of a problem. And so the reason why nutrition has such a vital role, far higher uh, impact, short term and long term in regards to depression is because we can actually design diets that can help you make more serotonin. And then other lifestyle features like exercise can develop more serotonin receptors. This is actually dealing with the underlying problem instead of just plugging vacuum cleaners to try to treat symptoms that are gonna cause some unwanted consequences down the road. What are some nutritional based suggestions that you would give uh, to increase these neurotransmitters? Okay, for, for tryptophan, and that's one that a lot of the pharmaceutical companies are wanting to manipulate is serotonin because it has such a vital role on anxiety even. 
And anxiety is actually surpassing depression now in our society. And so serotonin helps us keep us calm. It uh, helps with sleep. Uh, it helps with mood elevation. And so in order to get more serotonin, we need to produce it. And that means we need to get tryptophan into the brain. And the way of doing that is actually eating plant-based foods that are high in carbs and tryptophan. So these would be foods like pumpkin seeds and tofu and almonds and sesame seeds. Uh, and then also get enough light. We not only need tryptophan in the brain, once it's in the brain, it won't go into serotonin unless we have enough light through the eyes. An outdoor light or a light box is good for that. And then we also need to make sure that we're getting nutrients in the brain uh, like magnesium. Magnesium will come across itself. We don't need a carrier for that because it's small. Uh, and uh, those would be more in your legumes or in your greens. Uh, and then once those substrates are there, we can have nice serotonin factories in our nerves and those neurons and it can actually start producing um, what we have developed a deficit in and that can have a very powerful influence, um, more impactful um, short-term and long-term uh, than what you'll see with the pharmaceutical manipulation. So you mentioned tryptophan is necessary to make serotonin across mm -hmm. this blood-brain barrier. Mm -hmm. um, and so even though we may have a lot of serotonin in our body, without mm -hmm. tryptophan present, we're not going to see it in the brain. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem, okay? Mm -hmm. So besides the uh, tryptophan, what about uh, other nutrients that we can get to see uh, our neuropinephrine or dopamine increases in the brain? Okay, so that would be tyrosine uh, getting into the brain. And tyrosine is also an amino acid. It's a protein building block, but it's a potent antioxidant and it actually helps us with focus and memory once we make the dopamine and norepinephrine. So there's a little different carrier uh, for tyrosine. There's three competitors uh, for that, but great foods to help us get tyrosine into the brain are going to be foods like uh, watermelon, uh, your greens like mustard greens, uh, even seaweed, uh, spirulina is a good source of getting uh, tyrosine into the brain. And fortunately, pumpkin seeds are a good source here as well. And peanuts are actually a um, pretty good source of, um, of tyrosine as well. And they have enough carbs to be able to get it across. Now, interestingly, you know, <coughs> if you take a look at some foods, you're going to think, boy, you know, the meat looks like beef has pr plenty of tryptophan and tyrosine but we need to recognize that meat is a carbohydrate deficient food and it will help with your muscle buildups uh, and it'll help get tryptophan and tyrosine into muscles but it's not really going to help it get into brain because of, it, of its carbohydrate deficient nature so this is why the plant-based proteins are best and they also have a little better composition without all that competition from the other proteins that you get in animal foods um, that will compete and actually help us to, or actually prevent us from getting enough tyrosine and tryptophan into the brain. Another big implication of this, and this is where a lot of people go wrong, uh, you know, some people, family doctors and some other doctors that aren't informed, might say, well, let's just measure your levels of neurotransmitters in your blood. Well, that'll help us to know what you're short in. Uh, that is a fatal error because the neurotransmitter levels in the blood have nothing to do with what's in the brain. Mm -hmm. And so you'd have to do spinal taps, you'd have to do things like that uh, to be able to determine. And so we have to come up with alternative ways of recognizing where there's a not enough serotonin. And fortunately there's other blood work, it's indirect but it's very specific to help us know if we are having problems with serotonin synaptic activity or dopamine synaptic activity or if we're having too much of another activity we can even have too much serotonin activity or too much norepinephrine activity which can cause anxiety and sleeplessness and those sorts of things and so it's very important uh, to understand uh, this blood-brain barrier so that we don't um, start chasing you know, going down rabbit trails in regards to blood tests that have nothing to do with what's going on in the brain. 
Well, thanks for sharing a little bit more about nutrition and its impact on both the body and the mind and how the blood-brain barrier plays into affecting our brain performance. And I hope this helps answer some questions that you may have had about nutrition and its impact on the mind. Thank you.